Well, hello there and welcome. Let's start our journey uh, in the HashiCorp Vault realm. So <clears throat> I have passed the Associate Certificate exam by HashiCorp. I don't know if it holds that much value, but this is something that I figured I would do it. And uh, <clears throat> basically I decided that I want to pass the Walt Associate exam and I am preparing for it and I thought I would share my journey with you. So basically uh, Vault allows you to manage secrets and protect sensitive data. It has some nifty tricks up its sleeve and I think it's a, a pretty interesting tool and this is going to be about installation and setup of Vault. So uh, I have my CentOS 9 machine, it's up and running, and <coughs> I would like to install it, so what I will do <coughs> is to first install the yum utils, and once this is installed, we have to enable the appropriate HashiCorp repository. So this comes from the RPM releases, HashiCorp, etc. And if it was enabled, then under the yam.repos.d, we have the HashiCorp repo. Mm. And we should be able to check the content, but this is just another standard repository configuration. And then we can use the yam install vault. What's with this speed? Ah, now it's better. So uh, once the vault is installed, we have two options. <coughs> we can run the vault as a dev server, which will allow us to experiment it, but the uh, drawback or con of using it this way is that the storage for the secrets is going to be in memory. So when you shut down your vault server, everything is going to be lost. But it's good for experimentation. So vault server dev. And <clears throat> once this is installed, we have two important information that we can use and should use. One is that we have the vault address that we have to configure as an environment variable, and we need the root token to basically log in. Let's see. Uh, as I say, sent to S9, and we export the vault ADDR. And let me just copy and paste it. So it's running on localhost. I'm logged in to the CentOS machine. And we can use the vault login. And we will need the root token. And after that, you can see we have successfully logged in. We are authenticated and we can check the vault status. So as you can see, <coughs> it is now running. So I think I have the firewall D enabled. So let's stop it. And after that, I may be able to get to the vault. So HTTP sent to S9 8200. And I will not be able to get to the vault because I have to run it not on my loopback address, but rather the 00 IP address. So address of the vault server, the default is. So let's use the dash dash address. <coughs> equals zero, that's zero, that's zero. 
And now I should be able to refresh this page. And it's still not working. So why? We have this info. Log max request. API address. Hmm. Oh. So let's change it up a bit. Zero dot zero dot zero. Mm. All right, so this will not work this way, but I should be able to use the vault login and copy paste the token. And if I had a GUI uh, CentOS, we would be able to navigate there, but I can use the CURL HTTP 127.0.0.1 on port 8200 and <clears throat> the slash UI. Okay, and that's it. So the server is up and running, we are logged in. So uh, this is one thing that you can do to use it. Of course, you can install it on Debian, Mac OS, or wherever you feel like. Uh, the other thing that I want to do is to configure it to run as a systemd service. And we can do this by systemctl enable vault. And sudo systemctl enable vault and start vault. <clears throat> and uh, the important configuration file is under the Etsy vault the vault HCL and this is going to define how uh, the UI runs or looks like and uh, after that now I should be really able to log in and I should use the HTTPS and the connection is not secure, of course, because it's a self-signed certificate. But here comes the configuration. So we have to specify the number of sh key shares to split the root key into. So we have a root key. And every time we want to start the vault, we have to unseal it. And we need the root key to unseal it. So basically, I could say that I want the root key to be split into five shares. And I can define that I need to provide three valid portions of the root key to be able to log in. These are going to be the keys. And we just simply have to download them. And we continue to unseal. And I'm going to go to the downloads. And here I have the vault uh, cluster, etc. file. It's a JSON file. And these are the keys that I need to unseal it. So that's the first one. You can see this counter. That's the second one. And this is going to be the third one. And I am also going to need the root token. And there is going to be a warning message stating that uh, I have logged in with the root token. You can see it below my face. And every time I refresh this page, I will have to provide this token. That's all about it. Uh, and by default, there is a cubbyhole secret engine enabled. And basically, this secret engine is special because only the those uh, secrets are accessible, which were configured for the given token with which you use to log in. 
and uh, <coughs> if I create a secret here, I could say that root secrets, I could say username admin, and I could use password and password and save it. So now, uh, if I were to log in with another user, I would have, to, I would not be able to grab these secrets and vice versa. So for another user, this cubbyhole provides a protected space, even from the root token as well. So <coughs> that's kind of it. And what do we uh, have here as well? We are going to go through each uh, menu section and we will see how we can do this. So what do we have? Let's enable a username and password. Okay, and here we should be able to see the configuration and we can create users. So let's create the user Daniel with the password Daniel. <coughs> and what else do we have here? That's basically it. So if I want, I can log out and I can use the username Daniel, Daniel and sign in. And if I go to the cubby hall, you can see that there are no secrets. Let's create another. So Daniel secret, the username Daniel and the password Daniel and save it. And if I go back and choose the token authentication and I grab my root token, I should be able to go back and navigating here to the cubby hole, you can see that only the root secrets are visible. So that was all I wanted to show you uh, in this getting started video. See you in the next one.